hey, 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 make sure you start um, texting people, telling them that I am on live, y'all. I have something that has been bubbling up that I wanted to share with you. Hold on one second. It's giving me a weird message. Let me see. Okay. I think we're good. All righty. Let's see. All right. All right. Hey, TT. Hey, girl. Hey. All right. I told my girl that I was going live today, too, so she was ready for me. I'm happy you are here. Y'all, let people know that I'm going live or just send this live to them because I have something that I want to share with you. I have been telling this to my girlfriends. I've been telling this to my clients. I really believe what I'm about to share is going to be um, very insightful for you. Um, some of those dreams that you have had on the shelf, some of those things you have forgotten about, some of those things you've been dealing with for a long, long time. I have something that I want to share with you with about those things today. Hey, 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 I'm so happy to see you here. Um, so let's, I'm going to give a few minutes because I'm not going to be on here long. I have notes in front of me because I've told you guys many times I have attention deficit. So I will be down the street. You know what? Let me stop speaking that over myself. I struggle sometimes with symptoms that are congruent with attention deficit. And so I will be down the street around the corner and trying to come back to the point. So I have some notes in front of me. If you catch this live after I am done, I still want you to comment because I'm going to come back and I'm going to see the comments. I still want you to DM me. I want you to tell me what your biggest takeaway was from what I shared. I want to go ahead and start now um, just to honor the time. Again, if you watch this afterwards no worries i want to hear your thoughts all right so i want to start trying to do lives at least every friday 15 minutes at least every friday just to share with you all because i love connecting with my instagram community particularly i'm on facebook hold on it is there we go at the beginning of the year like many of you, I started praying and really toward the end of last year, I started praying about what is my word for the year? You know, that's what we do now, y'all. We have our word for the year. And I started praying into that, trying to figure out what my word is. And I got very clear that my word for the year was the word restoration, restore or restoration. I felt very strongly that God was telling me that there were some things that he was going to restore in my life this year in 2022, that there were some things that he was going to restore. And let me me tell you, I started sensing that very early on. As soon as January hit, some things just started popping up. They were really, really amazing. And so I knew that I was on point with that word. But then I realized, y'all, that the word wasn't just for me. It wasn't just for me. I have noticed a pattern with my personal friends, with my clients and with myself. I have noticed this pattern and I'm going to share with you what the pattern is, but there are two parts to this. I am watching people who had dreams that they have shelved, dreams that they put on the shelf, dreams that they forgot about, dreams that they just let go of. They shelved those dreams. And then the second part is I've been noticing that women in particular have noticed and recognized patterns in their life that they're no longer okay with. So these two things have been happening with my friends, with my clients, and with myself. That there's this two part. One, that there are dreams that have been shelved, dreams that they forgot about, or they've recognized patterns in themselves that they're no longer okay, okay with. But here is the deal. These dreams that they've shelved or these patterns have been over the course of 10 to 15 years. So as I'm talking to you, if the last 10 to 15 years, if you look back and you're thinking, yeah, it was about 10 years ago that I had this idea, this dream that I wanted to fulfill. It was like 10, 15 years ago. Or if you've been noticing, yeah, I've been thinking about this pattern that I've been in the last 10 or 15 years. I can't seem to get past this particular pattern. I keep finding myself hitting a wall. I can't seem to push past this place that I've been in. And it's been the last 10 or 15 years. If that resonates with you, stay tuned. Stay with me. Stay with me. Okay. So I had started realizing that. And so I began to realize that that word that I had wasn't just for me. That word restoration wasn't just for me. That word restoration is a season that we are in. The word was bigger than me. I believe we are in a season of restoration. We are in a season where God wants to restore. So let me break this down. Okay. So the two parts, remember, 
I told you I'll have my notes in front of me. The two parts was number one, there is this dream or this passion that you put on the shelf. You had a dream, you had a passion, you had this idea that you put on the shelf, you let it go. And you might've put it on the shelf for a few reasons. Number one, just life. Life started happening. Life started to be overwhelming. I was talking to someone recently and this thing started coming up as we were talking, this thing started coming up and she was like, Robin, yes, I had this dream. And she shared with me that she always wanted to be an actress, but then she started having children and then she started having challenges with finances. And so she had to put that on the shelf. And she was like, it was like 10 or 15 years ago. So are you sticking with me? If you've had this dream or your passion and you think back and you were like, yeah, it's been about 10 or 15 years and you shelved it, number one, maybe because of life. Maybe because of insecurity, you just started self-doubting. You started questioning whether or not you could really do it. You're looking at all the Instagram girls and the way they doing it, you ain't doing it like that. And so you started to have some insecurities. Or the third reason you might have shelved your dream is because of a casual comment from somebody who might not have even meant any harm. That's one of the things that has been showing up. Women are telling me, yeah, um, my mom or my sister or my cousin or my home girl, they love me and they care about me. But when I would talk about this thing, they would make a casual comment and it made me doubt that I could do it. They didn't mean any harm. A lot of times they were actually trying to protect me, but their comment kind of caused me to shrink back. So again, stay with me here. There is this word that I had at the beginning of the year, restoration, and I thought it was just for me. But the more I talk to my girlfriends, like my personal friends, the more I talk to them, I'm like, this keeps showing up. The more I talk to my clients and we're exploring what's going on, this keeps showing up. And the more I think about my own journey, this keeps showing up. It's two things that are showing up. One, there's some dreams that you put on the shelf that you forgot about. And then two, there's some patterns that you're starting to recognize you're no longer okay with. So let's lean in again on these dreams. There was a dream you had 10, 15 years ago, an idea, something you wanted to fulfill, something you wanted to do. And somewhere along the lines, you just kind of let it go again, maybe because of life maybe because of your own insecurities or because of casual comments from somebody else. Y'all know I'm not going to go down this path, but that internal dialogue will knock you out every, every time. But now that dream you had 10 or 15 years ago, that dream you had, it's starting to percolate again. You're starting to become more aware of it again. You're starting to think, wait a minute, is it too late? Can I do it? I want you to hear me right now. God is ready to restore. I want you to hear me right now. I want you to write this time down. I want you to write this date down. If you don't really know me like that, say that girl Robin said, I want you to believe with me that God is ready to restore. If this is resonating with you, if you can pinpoint back to 10, 15 years ago, that time period is very important because that's the pattern I've been seeing. If you can pinpoint 10 to 15 years ago and you're like, yeah, 10 years ago, I knew that I wanted to start this business. 15 years ago, I knew I wanted to change careers. 10 years ago, I knew that I wanted to try this. 15 years ago, I was thinking about doing this and somewhere I just let it go. Or maybe 10, 15 years ago, I was talking boldly about my passion and I kind of let it die. If that's resonating with you, hear me. God wants to restore and hear me. You thought, you thought, that those 10 years, that those 15 years have been time wasted. You thought it has been time wasted. And I am here to encourage you. It has not been time wasted. It's been a time of development. God has been developing something inside of you that you had no idea about. So many of you know that I have three children the Bible video kind of, there we go. We're going through this Bible study called The Good Life. And y'all, it was so interesting. It was so interesting to hear my daughters, all three of them really, but particularly my older one, to hear how she views God and how she understands God and her perspective about God, right? It was so interesting. And so this is a time for me to really help um, make sure that her perspective of God is rooted in the word. And so if I'm doing that with my 15, 14 year old, she's almost 15. If I'm doing that with my 14 year old, as she develops, don't you think God is doing that with you? Don't you think that these 10 or 15 years, God was just developing something in you that you didn't even realize needed to be developed. He was birthing something in you. 
confidence in you that you, you thought you were good, but God is like, over these 10 or 15 years, you thought that the time was wasted. But God is saying, no, no, daughter, the time was not wasted. I have been developing something in you. Let me read these scriptures to you very quickly. I didn't even intend for this to be so based on the word, but here we are. Joel 2 says this, hold on. Joel 2 says, I will restore the years. He says, I will restore the years. It goes on to say that the swarming locusts devoured. There have been some things that got taken from you. There have been some things that you lost. There have been some things that were um, that you felt discouraged about. There were some things that you felt like, how did this, ha oh my God. But God is saying, I will restore. Girl, he didn't say you had to restore. He didn't say you had to get in there and start working hard. He said, I am going to restore. That's how I know this word was not just for me. This word restoration for 2022. Now I see it just wasn't for me. The word God gave me in 2021, baby, that was for Robin May. You had your own word. I had my own word. But this word restoration, I believe he has given me a vision, not just for me. So Joel 2 says, I am going to restore the years. Jeremiah 30 says this, for I will restore health to you. And I believe that's not only just physical health, even mental health. We needed those 10 to 15 years to get mentally strong for where he wants to take us. Remember, I have been seeing a pattern with my personal friends, with my clients, and with myself. And that is two things. One, there have been some dreams that we've put on the shelf. There's some things that we just let go of. And then number two, there have been some patterns of behaviors that we're starting to recognize. And so I want y'all to lean in with me as I break this down. Right now, I'm leaning in with these dreams that we put on the shelf. And you thought that 10 or 15 years since you had that dream and you let that dream go again because of life, life just started happening. Listen, I, in the last 10 years, I didn't have three kids. Lord, longer than that. The last 10 to 15 years, oh my gosh. Even as I'm saying this right now, I had my first child 15 years ago. <laughs> I had my next child 10, uh, 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 almost 13 years ago. And then my next one almost eight years ago. And so you start having children and you start to forget about your passions or you um, had to get a job and it wasn't necessarily the job in the field that you wanted to, but the bills got to get paid. Who got time to be dreaming? So these last 10 to 15 years, you've been like, wait a minute, maybe you lost somebody. You lo oh, let me not even go there. I'm gonna go there in a minute. Okay. So Joel 2 says, I will restore the years. Jeremiah 30 says, for I will restore health to you. This is my favorite. First Peter five, many of y'all know that's my favorite scripture. It says, after you have suffered a while. Now listen, I'm not going to get in your business on this here live. I'm not going to get in your business. Just DM me and say, amen, Robin. Okay. Just DM me. It says, first Peter five says, after you have suffered a while, can you just take a moment? I just want you to look, turn your head this way and just look back over the last 10 to 15 years. Have there been any suffering? Have there been any challenges in your journey? Have there been some things that tried to take you out? I don't know if it was divorce. I don't know if it was a health concern. I don't know if it was death in your family. I don't know if it was the loss of a job. I don't know if it was a contract that ended. Hey, Christina, I don't know if it was a contract that ended. I don't know what it was, but I just want you to look over the last 10 to 15 years and ask yourself, have a come to Jesus with yourself. Have you suffered at all? Well, scripture tells us, 1 Peter 5 says, after you have suffered a while, and it goes on to say, he himself will restore. So again, I believe God is, you. not believe, I know, God is using these 10 or 15 years, or he has used those 10 to 15 years to build something in you for where he wants you to go. So I told you guys, like you, many of you know, I have three daughters and when I think about what I want my daughters to get from me, when I think about what I want Lee and I, my husband, to impart into them, when I think about what's priority to me, people are often surprised. So academics are very important to me. My husband and I have, both have higher degrees, so academics are important. I just told one of my daughters, I ain't gonna call her out on this, on this um, live, but I just told one of my daughters, we're not doing C's. We're we not doing C's. I'm not okay with C's. So academics are important to me, but academics are not the most important. 
academics are not the most important to me. Now, let's be clear. I'm not telling you that it has to be or shouldn't be that for you. I'm just talking about the values that we have over here in the mouse may have may household. So academics are important, but they are not the most important. For me, most importantly, is that they have an intimate relationship with God, that they know him for, for themselves, that we are doing our part. We can't control it. We can't dictate it, but that we are creating an atmosphere for them to know God. That's most important. Then another thing that's very important to me is that they know how to have healthy relationships, that they know how to engage with others in an empathetic and healthy way. Part of that emotional intelligence, again, a part of that emotional intelligence is that they are able to be resilient, that they're able to be resilient, that they are able to face situations and get through situations in a healthy way. And so as you are dealing with all the things that you have gone through, God may have been for you building an emotional strength inside of you because girl, where he is taking you, what he has for you down the street and around the corner, girl, what he has for you, there has to be some strength inside of you. There's going to be something that he is asking of you. There is a higher level and the little bitty stuff can't throw you off. And so he's been building you up in these last 10 to 15 years. I did not mean to be on here this long. Let's keep going. So remember, I told you there are two things. Number one, you put some dreams on the shelf. But then number two, the pattern I have been seeing is that my friends, my clients, and myself, that we've recognized some patterns that we have been operating in, and we've decided we're no longer interested in defending our dysfunction. We have decided, my girlfriends, my clients, and myself, all at the same time, we've decided, wait a minute, as I look back on these last 10 to 15 years, there have been some patterns of behavior that I'm not okay with anymore. I'm no longer okay with defending dysfunction. I was in, you know, my group chats. So let me tell y'all this real quick. Can I tell you something about me? I just said this on Facebook. I have an issue with screenshots. I screenshot stuff all the time. And that's because I have these weird social media rules. Don't nobody else have to follow them other than my close friends. But don't nobody have to follow them. But I have these weird social media rules that, girl, that ain't your business. You ain't got to comment on that. You ain't got to get into no argument with nobody over that. But baby, I screenshot. I screenshot and I send it to my group me's. I have all these group me's, my different girls. And so I'll send, girl, what do you think about that? I mean, it's not gossiping. It's just real intense discussion, right? And so I was just in one of my group meetings recently and we were talking about the fact that something has shifted in us. That we realize over the last 10 to 15 years, honey, we've been acting like we weren't all that. We've been thinking that we um, weren't measuring up, that we had gotten it confused, that we thought that we didn't have what it takes. And that pattern is no longer okay with us. We've recognized, wait a minute, I am the bomb.com. I have paid the price. I know what I'm talking about in this area. I know how to help you in this area, but I can help you get free in this area. And so many of us over these last 10 to 15 years, we're starting to recognize, wait a minute, there's a pattern of behavior. I keep trying out, recognizing that I need to try for a new job, but I keep shrinking back. I ain't gonna call no names. Or I recognize, wait a minute, I keep getting in these toxic relationships that are not serving me. Wait a minute, I keep settling for things that are no longer okay with me. And I've been doing this for the last 10 to 15 years. And women are deciding that that is no longer okay with them. That they've decided I'm no longer going to defend dysfunction. I'm no longer going to say that's just how I am. That's just who I am. That's just what I do. No, I am going to rise to the level that I really am in whatever area. And listen, many times, I want you to hear this. Many times we get stuck at a place where brokenness occurred. Now, the brokenness for you may not be the brokenness for me, but the brokenness can be the death of your parent the death of your spouse, God forbid, the death of a child. It could be the loss of a dream job. It could be a divorce. It could be crippling debt. But I want you to look back over the last 10 to 15 years and did something happen and you kept going. Here, this is important. You kept going 
and the people around you thought you were fine. You still were performing, but deep down you knew something wasn't right. You weren't showing up the way you really know you could show up. And when you trace it back, you can trace it back. Ah, it happened right there. It happened when I got divorced. It happened when I found out about that situation. It happened when I lost this person. It happened when I lost that job. You can trace it back over the course of 10 to 15 years. But what is happening now that God is shining a light on that place where you got stuck and he's inviting you out of the valley. God is shining a light on that place where you got stuck and he's inviting you out of the valley. He's saying, come on, it's time. It's time to move from that place. You are no longer willing to defend your dysfunction. There's a scripture that says where Jesus came to the man at the pool and Jesus said to him, do you want to be made well? That's what Jesus is saying to many of us. Hey girl, hey, 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 are you ready? Do you want to be made well? And so the same thing, God is ready to restore. God did not waste that time. God has been doing this as a time of development. So what I wanted to share with you is that if this resonates with you on the last 10 to 15 years, you know, there's a dream that you put aside okay. and God is saying now, 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 now is the time for you to say yes to that dream that you forgot about. Yes to that dream you let go of. Yes to that thing that you forgot, that you decided you weren't good enough for. He's saying now is the time. You know that thing. You know that idea that has been percolating. You know that area that God has been saying, now I want you to address this. If you are resonating with any of that, God is saying now is the time. Or if you can look back over the path of your life, the last 10 to 15 years, and you can identify some places where you've had a pattern of behavior that you know is no longer serving you and you're ready to let it go. God is saying, come on, come on. Do you want to be made well? It's time to come out of that valley. So I believe this is a time of restoration for all of us. Okay, so that's it. But you might be saying, okay, but what now, Robin? I got it. I'm with you. Hey, man, what do I do, y'all? One of the things my clients always say, we're going in. We're going in. We're getting some aha moments. And they always like, uh-huh, that's so nice, Robin. But now what? What do I do? Okay, now you gave me this awareness. When my girlfriends ask me to help them sort through a situation, I promise you that's what they say. Okay, I got the aha, Robin. Now what? So I'm going to give you some suggestions for now what? But first, let me say this. I did not mean to be on here this long, but let me say this particularly to the ladies who are 45 years, between 45 years old, maybe 44 and 54, 44 and 54. If you're somewhere along that age group, I want to say something specifically to you. One of the things I want us to understand is that that 44, 45, 50, 55 age period is a very particularly interesting time. Many of us were taught, girl, when you turn 40, that's your time. That's your time. You know, us church folks, you done came out the wilderness, right? And 40 is a very significant time. But the pattern that has been discovered is that 45, 46, 50, y'all, that is the time. And psychologists have said this for years, um, that that is the time where you start to pause for a minute. Y'all know what I'm going to say, pause and pay attention. Where you begin to pause for a minute, and reflect on the first half of your life. And you start to assess whether or not what you have been doing is what you want to continue to do. Now, for many of us, our parents, our generation before us, I'm talking about those of us who are between 44 and 54. The generation before us, they stayed in that position. They might have felt it, but they didn't feel liberated to do anything about it. But you are feeling it. You're feeling like, wait a minute. Is what I've been doing, whether it's in my career, whether it's in how I've been doing my relationships, if, whether it's how I've been parenting, if it's how I've been engaging in my relationship with God. I don't know what it is specifically for you, but I believe if you're between 44 and 54, you're in that time period where you're like, wait a minute, is what I've been doing and how I've been doing it, is that the way I want to continue to do it? And if you are feeling that, I just want to help you take a deep breath. Go ahead and say, Take a deep breath, girl. You ain't crazy. You ain't crazy. And we are in a position now, thank God for our mothers. My mother might see this. She has a secret Instagram. Hey, mama, thank you. Thank God for our mothers. Thank God for our grandparents because they set a foundation to give us choice. 
We now have choice. We now get to determine whether or not we want to keep doing what we've been doing. Now we have an eye. Our eyes are open to the fact that we don't have to live miserable. That we don't have to stay stuck. Now, listen, I ain't telling y'all to leave y'all husbands. Don't be DMing me telling me, Robin, you told me I could get a divorce. Now, I go over there, I believe in marriage. Go on over there to my I believe in marriage Instagram. But it doesn't mean that you can keep doing, you don't have to keep doing the marriage the way you've been doing it. You and your husband can have a come to Jesus. Y'all can sign up for my marriage course over there at I Believe in Marriage. You can do something different. You don't have to stay in the same field you've been in. You can start figuring out about something different. You have choice. And so if that is resonating with you, I just want to help you. I want to give you the words that you need, you've been needing to hear. All right. So I promised you. I promised you that I was going to tell you what you need to do. What now? Okay, Robin, I got it. What now? I want you to first understand you have to do some work. Step one, you need to identify. Let me be careful about my language. You don't need to do anything. But if this is resonating with you, what I want to encourage you to do is number one, identify where is the place that what I'm saying to you resonates. So go back and start the video from the beginning and write down, get a journal and write down mm -hmm. what have I said that is resonating with you. Where is the message that I am resonating? You have to first identify, identify in your life where there is a disconnect. If you scroll back on my Instagram, I show you the life assessment that I help clients with. I want you to go back and screenshot that. Look at every area of your life and identify where there is a disconnect, where there's an undercurrent. Y'all keep seeing me do this. That's what I do with my clients. There's an undercurrent of life dissatisfaction. You cannot change what you don't acknowledge. Y'all, I'm giving you the template. You first have to identify where there is a place of disconnection where there's a place of life dissatisfaction. And y'all, this takes courage because a lot of times we keep acting like everything is okay, really because we are afraid to admit that it's not because we don't know what to do with it. But first, you just got to admit it. So number one, identify the specific place where my message has resonated with you. Identify the specific place where my message has resonated with you. I'm giving you the steps. That's number one. Once you have identified that place, it might be places, there might be places, but once you've identified the place where my message is resonating with you, number two, you need to begin to explore that. Now, many times you can't do it by yourself, sis. You need somebody to help you shine a light. You know, when, um, before I had to take a break for healing, I was learning, trying to run a 5k and I was using this app called couch to 5k y'all. And I got up to a whole mile before I had to take a break. So I'm starting again, but when I'm running by myself, it's one thing, but y'all, my husband went out there with me one day and I was so ready to stop. Homeboy was in my ear, go, go, go. Because the truth is, it's hard for us to push ourselves by ourselves. That's why you need a lot of times a trainer because the trainer will push you a little bit further. When I'm with my coaching or counseling clients, I push them a little bit further. So it's hard for you to do it by yourself. So even if you don't invest in a coach, don't worry about it, life circle. My life circle program is starting in April, April 18th. We can do it together. But even if you don't invest in a coach, if you do it by with a friend, ask a good friend to go on this journey with you. So number one, identify, then begin to explore. Where is that area and what is the problem? So if the issue is in your marriage, sis, start to get clear, honey, you can't, you can't have him help you. He can't make the change if you can't tell him what the issue is. Just saying, I feel some kind of way ain't good enough. We grown. We are grown. We're supposed to be able to identify what we're feeling. So number one, identify, then begin to explore. What is it? What is the major issue? If it's in your career, what is it? What is going on? Why am I dissatisfied? If it's something happening with your children, you don't feel comfortable with y'all's relationship. What is it? I just wish she would talk to me more. Um, it doesn't feel like she trusts me. My daughter. I ain't going to tell you which one. My daughter said, mommy, I don't tell you something because I know you're going to go tell your homegirls. <sighs> do y'all understand the work I'm having to do to restore her trust? I was like, I don't be telling my homegirls. 
So I had to restore the trust. It's hard to be honest about that, but be honest about where the disconnect is and what the issue is. So number one, identify. Number two, explore. And then number three, strategize. What do I need to do differently? Number one, identify. Number two, explore. Number three, strategize. All right, y'all. I did not mean to keep you that long. If you have watched this, if something resonated with you, can you make, leave a comment or DM me? If there's a friend that you know needs to listen to this, tag her below. I love to comment with y'all or com connect with you all and have conversation. So make sure that you comment in the comment section and I will respond. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. I'll talk to you later. Now, here's the deal. I don't know how to end this live, so let's figure it out. Let me see. I always mess up with, I cannot believe I've been on here 30 minutes. That was not my intention. Okay, let's see. Maybe if I just hit X. Let's try. Bye, y'all.